I heard Scarface say, word for word, he said, people want to be like Mike. I wanted to be like Jay. That's fucking hard. Yeah. How, 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 do you, how do you feel when you, when you hear things like that? You know, I, I feel honored, man. I feel honored to, uh, you know, to inspire all of them that come after me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because one thing I never wanted my kids or nobody to do is, is have to hold their head down mm -hmm. when my name is mentioned. So mm -hmm. for one to be able to hold his head up, mm -hmm. you know, from observing me or being inspired by me mm -hmm. is inspirational to me. It's a beautiful whoa now, whoa now, whoa now. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, man. Hey, what up? How y'all doing? Lapita, I told y'all I was gonna be on TV, girl. You know what I'm saying? Let's get with it. We're gonna talk about black fathers and the situation that's going on right here or down here in Houston. Now, you know, lately I've been looking in this YouTube streets, man. Everybody, all of these Negroes out in these YouTube streets, man, they become private I gotta, investigators. I gotta download this story before they it go FBI away. investigators. These niggas are so lawyers now. All evidence. Mike. Prince underscore I do this. All right, bet. Let me down where Jazz Prince said. Rest in power to the brother. Unfortunate, terrible situation, no matter where it happened. Unfortunately, it happened in Houston. And it happened dealing with a situation I want to speak on. And I don't want to speak on so much as the takeoff situation. I want to speak on black fathers, black men. Ah! No, God, please, no, no. No! Now, for those who don't have children, it might not resonate with you. Those who have children, you want to be the best father or the best version of a father that you can be to your son, right? You want your son to follow the best qualities of you, you know, that you want to emulate. You want him to be more successful than you. Now, this is what we were taught, right? So, what's the difference between this man and his father? <laughs> And this man and his father. Remain standing and uh, hold up your right hand, please. Do you uh, solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you, God. So help me, my God. Well, of course, the obvious is one is white, one is black. But that's not the situation. The situation is, is that the black fathers, we always get held to a certain scrutiny. Hey, that's pretty good. But they both come from money, right? In a position, right? And they're both trying to uphold their family legacy, right? Except as this father, the white one, he is celebrated. Yeah, he used in rap lyrics. When I put this hat on, it made me feel like Superman. He can speak for me anytime he wants. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. Right, exactly. Uh -huh. Okay, brother. Okay. See, all you doing right now uh -huh. is flatulating your liquids. And he loved by the significant artists in the hip-hop world. But the black one, he's trolled. You know, he's made a mockery of. And everybody is denigrating his brother, right? Now, I'm not a private investigator. I'm not here to solve no cases. I'm not here to do none of that. We just talking about the optics and how certain individuals and groups of people stay on code. All right. This dad here is a hip hop pioneer, right? He built his legacy from the ground up, right? Black dad. That's something that you want your kids to emulate. You want to be celebrated. I'm a target, you know, probably rightfully so. But, uh, you know, when I, uh, chose to, uh, you know, transition, they never wanted me to believe that, you know, I could exercise my entrepreneurship in corporate America. So you got a J. Prince Jr. who is emulating his dad, right? We're not talking about the gangsterism. We're just talking about the legacy that he's leaving. Um, everybody's blaming J. Prince for a lot of things. And I'm going to get to the, why y'all wrong. And y'all putting this man's life in danger. Y'all don't care. It's the internet. Y'all just want likes. Y'all just want views. Y'all will say anything. The legacy that he's led, right? But this other dad, right? His dad was a racist, known racist. Here's the evidence. Father, Donald Trump's father, Fred Trump, was arrested at a Ku Klux Klan riot in Queens, New York. The article subtitled Klan Assails Policemen. It reports that a thousand Klansmen and 100 policemen staged a free-for-all battle. It lists Fred Trump, 
with his address as one of seven men who were arrested and arraigned for the assault. Charges against him were dropped. New York Police Commissioner Warren is quoted in the article saying the Klan not only wore gowns, but had hoods over their faces, almost completely hiding their identity. The report was found and published in 2015 by the website Boing Boing. In a New York Times interview about the discovery, your uncle, Donald Trump, said, I saw that it was one of one little website that said it. It never happened. They said there were no charges, no nothing. It's unfair to mention it, to be honest, because there were no charges. They said there were charges against other people, but there were absolutely no charges. To Doubt the v validity of the report? It would be kind of a random thing to make up 60 years ago or uh, 80 years ago, whenever it was. Um, the only thing that surprises me, because, you know, my family was quite anti-Semitic. My family was quite anti-Semitic, uh, along with other things. Now, Mr. Prince had nothing. His family had nothing growing up, so he didn't come from a silver spoon family. So he worked his way up to provide and make a way for himself, right? So now he's in a position to hand this over to his son. But see, all I see in our situation, since this situation with takeoff has happened, is the black community coming down and speaking negatively about the Prince family or the Prince situation. Now, I'm not attorney at law. I'm not a private investigator. I don't have evidence. I see the same things that you see. But unlike you, you know, as a time to be quiet and to understand a situation and to look deep into it than to react to it. And a lot of times what we do is reactionary. We react to certain things, which leads me to this. So now you got a Donald Trump or you have a Joe Biden, Jim Crow Joe. Deprived as a youth. It doesn't matter or not whether or not they had no background that enabled them to have to uh, become a, a social, uh, become socialized into the fabric of society. It doesn't matter whether or not they're the victims of society. The end result is they're about to knock my mother on the head with a lead pipe, shoot my sister, beat up my wife, take on my sons. So I don't want to ask what made them do this. They must be taken off the street. The street. His son, known crackhead. His son comes from wealth, comes from influence. But also, Jim Crow Joe comes from slave money. How many slaves did they own? Well, Joe Biden's great-great-great-grandfather owned 12 slaves in 1820. Five male slaves, ages 14 to 25. Two male slaves, ages 26 to 44. Three female slaves, ages 0 to 13. One female slave, aged 14 to 25. And one female slave, aged 45 plus. But no one is speaking out. Ain't no one in an uproar about that. You know that this man can affect the lives and has affected the lives of millions and millions of black Americans all over the world, right? He created the 94 crime bill, but ain't no one in the, there's nobody in uproar. But because we're so trained and fixated about hip hop and the legacy and the culture of hip hop, it becomes a hot topic. You know, we, we love entertainment. We love to be entertained. We love famous people. We love artists and we love, uh, we, we, it's almost like a worship. We worship this type of thing. But see, the dominant society, they don't act like we act. You know, they don't move like we move. You know, and for all our religious zealots, you know, and our people who have a belief system that we use as a measuring tool of thinking, you got to know that Jesus was black, right? And if Jesus was black, you got to know that his man, his homeboy, Judas, he was black too. So a lot of time that off-code people create off cold situations. So the reason why we as a black community are divided and conquered so easily is because we still have a plantation mentality, physically and mentally. See, some of us, when we should be loud and speak out, we're quiet. And when we should be quiet, we speak the loudest. See, we act like children to the dominant society. And the reason being is because we don't have a code. And when you don't have a code, everything and anything is food for the streets. So all of these hot topics you hear being talked about and speaked about, 
These are topics that put us in a bind and black fatherhood is looked at as a joke. So while you think you're doing something special by speaking on Jay Prince Jr., you're trying to diminish the legacy of a Jay Prince. Now, he may have been a shrewd, rude businessman in doing business, but I don't see anyone talking about business when it comes to what Kanye was talking about. I'm a kill this nigga. I'm a fuck your bitch. I'm a kill this nigga. I'm a fuck your bitch. I'm a kill this nigga. That's the real anti-Semitic shit that the Jewish people get paid off of. The most dangerous thing that's facing um, um, our society. Are you so, so why sign an artist that would promote that? Um, b because I, I, I already answered that question. You weren't paying attention. Um, she asked me talent or issues, and I said talent. But I, I, I have to. I, I can't give up on people. I was saying that's hypocritical, though. You're, you're saying um, the it's opportunistic. Problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I got, I got people to feed. <laughs> um, oh, I got a, I got a, I got a business to run. <laughs> you're gonna make Dame Dash take this clip and call you a culture vulture. Oh, what Kyrie Irving is going through. No one is speaking on that. No one is speaking to the individuals that silence Nick Cannon. No one is speaking to the individuals that locked up Bill Cosby. And before you go to throwing rocks, remember, it was just a conversation about R. Kelly. R. Kelly didn't go. He didn't get in the bind he got into until people started having conversations about these women. And these videotapes have been out the whole time. So you got to understand that we are our worst enemy. And if there's no respect for black fathers and there's no relevance for black fathers, then what do we have? We have a nation full of people who really self and perpetuate the self hate on each other. We hate on each other and you wonder why we hate on each other. Now let's go to this mob ties name. I just want to get into this for a second. Now, I don't hear nobody talking about Toby and Igwe. Toby and Igwe. I know you don't know nothing about him, but he's hot. The reason why you don't hear about him because of his name. Toby and Igwe. Now, Mob ties, that's a name that you, you, you can relate to because it's, it's, it's something that resonates with you. Now, if it would have been Zulu tribes or Zulu nation, and there is a Zulu nation, where is it? You don't hear about it. So that's why dudes don't have names that identify who they are. They have names they identify that come from the plantation. So if you're talking to a plantation nigga, you got to speak plantation nigga language. So don't get hot and bothered by the name Mob Ties. It's just a name. Just like the names you have. You don't have your original names. You have the name of your slave master. So don't act like you so high and mighty in that, oh, this name, oh, you following Italians, you following mobsters, you following this. You're following somebody and you give praise to somebody. Psychologically, you have an issue. Hell, you talking about? This is heritage. My granddaddy's, pappy's daddy's, daddy's, and his brother fought as a Confederate soldier. Then my mama's daddy, which is my granddaddy, Freddie White, fought in the Air Force. Fuck you talking about, nigga? Uncle Joe went? Oh, uh, yeah, nigga. I don't, yeah, nigga. I'm the, yeah, fuck you talking about? With yourself. And I'm talking to black men. You have an issue with black fathers. And if you strive to be the black father that these men strive to be, then of course I want my child to follow in my footsteps and emulate the best parts of me. Remember, I said the best parts of me. So because his father was a stand up man, he stood for something. He didn't take no shit off nobody. And here in the streets, he was respected. I think everyone wants that. Everyone wants that. So when you see a Jay Prince Jr. doing what he does, and we're talking about the best of him, because we only speak when you hear about the negative. What about the positive things? What about the things he's done? What about the individuals that you see? What about the con contributions he's made to hip hop? Because some of your greatest artists came through the Prince family. If it wasn't for them, wouldn't be a Drake. The world wouldn't be blessed with a Drake. So understand that, Sometimes you got to be quiet and study 
rather than speak out when everyone is speaking out. Because what you can do is you can Judas a Jesus. And I'm not saying that they're Jesus. I'm saying that you can throw negative on a positive situation rather than sit back and allow that situation to play out. You dig? Like, comment, subscribe. This is Big Bass Life coming at you again. You dig? You dig what I'm saying? So, and uh, closing words from my OG. You dig? Who taught you to hate the texture of your hair? Who taught you to hate the color of your skin to such extent that you bleach to get like the white man? Who taught you to hate the shape of your nose and the shape of your lips? Who taught you to hate yourself? From the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Who taught you to hate your own kind? Who taught you to hate the race that you belong to? So much so that you don't want to be around each other. No, before you come asking Mr. Muhammad, does he teach hate? You should ask yourself, who taught you to hate being what God gave you?